Good afternoon, Viva MK. Thank you for joining me on this um, live business update on Friday, 17th of July, I do believe it is. Um, and thank you if you're going to be, of course, watching later. Um, there's just a few things I want to cover today. I know how valuable all your time is. I always appreciate anybody joining me for a business update. And we've had multiple Zooms and everything else, but there's nothing like a live connection like we're having now. Um, so the first thing I really want to talk about very, very quickly, and partly based on the fact that like many of your inboxes, my inbox is absolutely full of a plethora of people prospecting for their business. Now, that's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with prospecting. But when you send me a link to ask me if I'm interested in earning an extra income, at least look at my profile and work out for yourself that if there is no way on this planet I'm going to be interested, no matter how good your business is, in earning an extra income. So it's not that I dislike the industry we're in. I love the industry. Absolutely love it. It's the people I don't like. <laughs> no, that's not entirely true. The industry is fantastic. However, that scattergun approach of trying to attract people into an opportunity without even doing a tiny iota of research to see who you're talking to, it's not good for the business. It's not good for the industry. It gives the entire industry a bad name. And I've had two of those this morning. Yes, I know I need to lose weight, but really I'm not going to do it by somebody who's trying to sell me an opportunity um, and telling me it's the best ground floor opportunity ever. God, if I had a pound for every time I've heard somebody say that. And no, I don't want to wear makeup because I can get that from my own organisation. So please do your research if that's the way you prosper. Anyway, it's not the industry I dislike. It's some of the people within the industry who give the industry a bad name. Um, the ethos of network marketing is phenomenal. It's the best ethos ever. It's the, you know, the original ethos, helping, supporting, encouraging, building confidence, a real belonging, valuing people. That ethos is wonderful. But what ends up happening is that most people end up being a very, very small cog in a big company and they just become another number. Now, what's the difference between that and the corporate world? So my point is, I love the ethos of the industry. That's why I want our business. I'm not going to say we're better than anybody else. That's not for me to say, but I want the ethos of our business to go back to what it originally was meant to be, valuing people, everybody plays a part. No one is going to be a small cog in this business. You know, and I'll come on to it a little bit later, how no one in this business is just a number. We all know each other. We all work with each other. We all connect with each other. And the last few months of the bizarre era we've all lived in have been living proof of that. So I'll talk about that more in a second. Now, as you know, over the last few weeks, we've been introducing new products. Um, and talking of people, you know, many of the products we have introduced have come from recommendations from you guys. And they're direct recommendations to me or the buying team, direct connection between us. That's another thing you cannot do in a sizable corporate-based company. You couldn't have done it in Clean Easy. It would have taken months to get something out in front of you. Recently, we've had a virucidal spray, which of course has worked very, very well and is selling. It's going to be on the front of the autumn book that is out very soon. I'll tell you when that's coming out. Um, we have our own hand sanitizer. Now, if anybody had said to me, 
six months ago that we'd be putting PPE into catalogues. I would never believe them, but then none of us would have believed the era we're all living through. Blast cans we gave you last week. Again, quality products that actually work. Then onto the candles and waxes, which many of you received yesterday. Um, we put the biggest order in that this small company had ever had. And the way the sales went yesterday morning on the first morning of their release, meant we had to put a second order in immediately, even before the day was over. So that's just progress where products are concerned, but it's not going to stop there. You know, I'm not here to boast about the business or tell anybody we're doing it better. I couldn't give a damn what anybody else is doing or selling. All I care about is the way we work and the way we are building our own ethos and building the environment that I think is so important in our industry. You know, anybody can sell any of the products that we have got, but what we're trying to do is create this unique culture where people really do belong and are part of that original ethos where network marketing was always, always supposed to sit. Um, so talking of autumn catalog, like I've just mentioned, for once we have a catalog on schedule and that is scheduled for the end of July. Next week, I'm sure no somebody in head office will leak details of products and catalog um, uh, bits and pieces of the catalog. Or I'm sure we'll have a PDF for you next week as well. So that's right on target, as promised a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, that's done and dusted. That's the autumn catalog. Hard to believe we're talking about autumn when we have that summer, but there you are. Uh, Christmas is going to be soon followed after that. Of course, that's what we're working on now. And to think one year ago, or almost a year ago, as we reformed this reinvigorated version of Viva MK, we'd, we left the toxic situations that we were involved in before, and we create this new organization. We opened a business with a 22 page catalog. Uh, we had 22 selling pages um, just about a year ago when we reopened on the 1st of September. And now, as you know, you know, we're growing our product ranges, we're getting you unique products um, and multiple catalogs of which the next and one of the biggest catalogs we've had is coming out at the end of July, which will be two weeks today. It'll be two weeks today of the end of July. So um, and that to date will be the biggest one we've given you. Um, so the point is that, yes, you need to have fresh catalogs. There's no doubt about that. Um, of course, with any business, there's been a number of products that haven't been available. You know, you've got to remember there's a worldwide shortage, believe it or not, of trigger sprays. Never ever make the mistake of trying to buy your own because every trigger spray is very different on every kind of product. You know, can't have the same um, trigger spray on a biocidal spray that you can have on an air fresh and they're very very different anyway we're getting around that and as you know we've put some great investments into our stock buying so that we were always at the front of the queue when things do become available um, but nothing will be particularly out of stock for very long and as you've seen over the last few weeks replenishment generally happens quite quick if there's a problem product in there, it's the same challenge that the supermarkets are having. As you go into your local Tesco or your Sainsbury's, you'll find that where they had 20 types of product in a range, they may only have 10 now, and the rest of the shelf may well be empty. And that's because overall availability in the supply chain has suffered. Of course it's suffered. We've been through the most bizarre time in the last four months this country has ever seen or any of us have ever lived through. And on the basis of that, it's not necessarily that components are missing in manufacturing, but actual supply chains are broken too. Not just because of components, but because of a whole plethora of reasons. But anyway, that's the same with any business, whoever they are. Uh, no one is out without their challenges. But where we're concerned, that again, the unique selling point of our business has been not any challenges. We've had them like anybody. It's nothing to do with that. What where where we have been successful, and by the way, we finished period seven on Wednesday. 
they just gone uh, 48 hours ago and as you already know um the biggest sales period we've, we've had in 2020 so far um and since we reinvigorated the business last september now for us to come out of lockdown with all the challenges that everybody had then the way you collaborated and connected with each other has been the reason why period seven which just ended is historically our best period that we've had to date i'm not going to talk about you know having huge sales numbers or anything like that because you know what that's largely irrelevant i just wanted to point out that is your collaboration and your connection that's created that your collaboration and connection with us the culture we've created together and the way we have stayed connected i have never known people from different parts of the business, connect with each other the way you have all connected with each other, the way you've supported each other, the way you've promoted each other, the way you've encouraged each other. Never seen it in all my years, no matter what part of the industry I've ever worked in. Certainly haven't seen it in the corporate world. And it's because of all that, um, our business went from the lockdown stage where like any other business, we plummeted by 75% month on month as lockdown happened. We came through that and just finished our busiest and best period to date in this new reinvigorated version of the business. So that is a testimony to everybody working together. It is a testimony of everybody coming together, working together, staying strong together. I can't thank you enough for every single one of you, whether you're the HQ staff or whether you're a distributor, a brand new distributor, or you've been with us from the start, everybody has played their part. Um, I, as you know, we had a live stream. We were the first company that had a live stream on the 20th of June. Nobody knew how that was going to go, um, but we just went ahead and did it. And, you know, thankfully that was quite successful according to your feedback. We've got a date in the diary of the 3rd of October. Do you know, I have 12 venues currently on hold because none of the venues can confirm yet, as you know, whether big crowds will be allowed in rooms. But we still have to go ahead and book. We can't just wait for the world to change. We have to try and do things to help uh, encourage that change. So venues booked all over the place. Um, you know, six of those hotels haven't even reopened yet. I remember mentioning this on a Zoom last night, 12 venues booked, six aren't even open yet, but we had to get our, our, our places booked because I'm determined for us to have an event on the 3rd of October. Now, I don't know what the state of the world is going to be. And if it is adverse the way it has been, then you know what? We'll do another live stream, but one way or another, we're going to get together. I'd prefer it not to be digitally this time. I'd prefer it to be face to face because that's where we can really get up to our usual brand of shenanigans, of course. So you can't have shenanigans digitally. Um, other than just not wearing trousers while you're doing a broadcast. That's about as far as you can go. I don't even know why I said that. But anyway, um, the point is, 3rd of October is in your diaries um, and I'm uh, absolutely determined to do, some, to do something with that. And as you know, when I'm determined, like many of you are, we just don't ever give up no matter what. Now the country may have different ideas and the virus might have different ideas and we'll play along with that of course because nobody should ever be put into jeopardy and as you know all the way along I have bleated on about it time and time and time again. This is about safety and perception. No matter what you think about the threat that there is in the world today, it has created a sense of fear. And that sense of fear is even more dangerous than the actual virus itself. And that is a fact, you know, whether you like to hear that or not, it is. And that fear is going to be with us for a long, long time. So as businesses are concerned, yes, people are gradually going back to the shops and so on. But the welcome some of you got when you have returned to your customers is probably the greatest welcome 
that you've ever seen because human connection has become more important than ever before. I think that's the biggest thing that people have missed in the lockdown era is that human connection has just been missing. And when you have connected the way you've connected with each other and you've done that with your customers, that is another reason why our period only just finished 48 hours ago has been so successful. Now, on my forecast, it isn't now to smash the numbers of that period. I'm sure we'll do that organically anyway. My goal is always the same, to make sure that everybody is valued in this organization in a way that other organizations cannot ever do. Nobody should ever be a small cog in this business. I want everybody to feel the value of being an organization where they can actually make a change, um, where people are truly valued. You know, we're small enough to change our direction at any time. Small enough, flexible enough, and we have enough vision to be able to do that. I mean, look how quickly we managed to introduce candles and um, what melts into our range. And I'll tell you now, if our small range that we only introduced this week actually works, your customers like them, you like them, there's nothing stopping us creating an entire publication of candles and associated paraphernalia. Nothing stopping us at all because we can do things like that. We can make those changes and that is almost entirely based on your feedback. You know, I'm working with another product range which we will launch long before this year is over. And I don't want to talk much about it because on some things, I just have to go and do them and as much as everybody's opinion matters, a hundred people have a hundred opinions on this. And sometimes it's best just to have your vision and just go and do something and create something that people buy into. You see what I've always said about product? You give people what they want or you give them what they didn't know they wanted, but then they want it. So you create demand or you fulfill demand. And they're the two things we try and do. And so we, we're, creating a new product range, um, which I will want to launch long before this year is over, hopefully on the 3rd of October, if everything goes well. But it'll be another revolutionary change for our business. It'll be a brand new side to our business and it'll have its all its associated paraphernalia, including websites and everything else that goes with it. But that's the kind of thing we can do that big organizations can't ever, ever do. Remember, you know what I said about being a number. In many organizations, people just become numbers. Um, in ours, so many of you are contributing to the growth of this business. I mean, look at example for the way the Sparkle team work, contributing to the business on a weekly basis. Look how the beauty brand directors work. You know, most companies wouldn't even ever allow that to happen. That was one of your ideas, not my idea. We'll not take credit for that. But the beauty brand directors, the Sparkle team, and the advocates are actually shaping our business. That's not because I don't know what to do. Of course I know what to do. And it's not because my team don't know what to do, but there's nothing like the involvement of people who care passionately about the business and getting them involved at the coalface, and then they will benefit from that. So advocates, the Sparkle team, the beauty brand directors, all regularly contributing to the growth and power of our business. Talking of which, I have, and I, I nearly forgot then, I have a customer competition to just to draw very, very quickly. Um, the beauty brand directors put a customer competition together and there were two outright winners. And I think it was obviously based on the look created by the makeup that we sell. And in second place was a 
In second place, I should, should just pick this up. Second place was Sarah Twist, who gets a Viva MK mystery box. And in first place, and congratulations to you, a Corrie Nolan, who got £50 worth of prizes from our ranges, or will do very soon. So congratulations to both of you. They're just customers, not distributors. And here I have uh, some of the entrants, and these people, these winners will also get a prize. I'm going to pick two names out of these, um, and these Get also get a prize, but me being me, have forgotten the prize, but the beauty brand de directors will be there to pick up the pieces afterwards, and I appreciate that. So first, it's a lady called Brooke, I only have the first name, um, so it's Brooke who gets the first prize, and then second, um, second prize in the draw is Michaela Bila, Michaela Bila. Uh, congratulations to you both. You get your prizes. I can't recall what the prizes are, so the beauty brand directors can probably make it up and tell, tell me what they are. But anyway, uh, congratulations to you and, and congratulations to you others. And thank you to the beauty brand directors who, as I said, along with the advocates and along with the Sparkle team, are consistently promoting the business. The whole idea behind these teams of people that I knew were always going to be so powerful in our organization was one, because no other company can do that. They can't do it. No company can have people looking at the direction of a business and being advisory, um, advising on it and working closely with the people that run it. It does not happen. I've been in the corporate world all my life. If anything, they avoid it like the plague. That's the first thing. And secondly, more importantly than that, it wasn't about m marking scores against other companies that I can't do, but more importantly, it was about the fact that I knew people would add value. You see, one of the things that are consistent forgotten in organizations like ours that the greatest value doesn't come from the people who run the business the greatest value comes from the people out there at the cold face of the business this is why we were able to introduce candles and waxes virucidal sprays fragrance sprays um, and this is why the, the, the mystery product that I'm working on has come about because people gave their um, suggestions um, and we've taken that one step further. So my point is that advocates and Sparkle team and beauty brand directors have all added a place in the business. And in time, every one of them will benefit from that assistance and support that they've given. So, you know, back to the business, everything is going on. As I've always said to you, the show must go on. You know, um, all of us did whatever we could throughout the lockdown era. And it is an era because it's something that none of us were expecting um, and none of us really knew what was going to happen. We still don't. And it's still kind of, you know, uh, generating and changing every single day. But our show must always go on. That's why we have the 3rd of October booked. And at best case scenario, we'll have, even if it means, you know, one of the couple of the rooms that I've uh, provisionally booked are absolutely huge. And I mean huge, which will uh, allow for social distancing if it's actually needed in October. I don't know how that um translates into a gala dinner that would be very awkward having a socially distanced gala dinner although sometimes you want to distance yourself from some people <laughs> anyway the point is watch out today for brand new incentives it was too much to go into on this live we'll publish them this afternoon brand new incentives for the business to get us through period eight um remember no one in this business is a small cog um we will value everybody and you know we do but not just us i mean you do that to each other which again is so unique you know i've been so in so many businesses where people are treated with such disdain and such disrespect i never want to see that happen in our organization and like i said you know we have a lot of control, we have a lot of flexibility, we can change things on a daily basis and 
you know, when it comes to change and flexibility, you'll see more of that in this last quarter of the year. And, you know, when that quarter starts, you'll see so many things that will change in the organisation. But for us to have the best period that we we could have possibly had um, just in period seven, after everything that's happened, is testimony to every single person doing what they do and do it so well. It's not about the products, it's not about the catalogs, it's about the culture of the organization, which is the glue that sticks it all together. And I can only thank you for that from the bottom of my heart because, you know, um, this is all I've ever wanted to do myself. You know, look at all the businesses out there and almost take the best pieces of all of them, strip them of any ego or pointless leadership and just base it completely and utterly on people. So for those of you in my inbox, please remove yourselves. I'm not interested in another opportunity. Please do your research. If you're going to um, propose businesses, it's really silly if you don't do that. And for all of you in the organization, thank you very much. Undoubtedly, we'll catch up sooner or later. Um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all um, on the 3rd of October. In the meantime, watch out for new incentives today. Watch out for the brand new catalogue PDF and any leaked products next week. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing. And thank you to all of you. Take care. Goodbye.